Hey everyone, Tom Tullis here. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today I'm going to show you how to paint your cavern water tiles from Fat Dragon Games. Now, to start with, before we get to painting, when you go to slice these models, if you're using Cura, you're going to want to turn on Enable Ironing. This is going to make the water surface mirror smooth and look fantastic. If you're using uh, Prusa's slicer, you're going to want to use the layer editing feature, and in the... Uh, height of the water area you're going to want to dial down the layer height to make it smooth now um, the rocks are just painted according to our cavern painting tutorial that's another video uh, exact same way nothing's changed on that so I'm not going to cover it here uh, I could not find a watercolor I like so we're going to custom mix it I'm just using a dark green in this case Christmas green uh, ocean blue uh, and black and I'm mixing it four parts green two parts blue one part black don't get hung up on what colors I'm using here it doesn't have to be these exact ones mixing them like this any type of dark kind of medium to dark forest green leafy green medium blue and black are just gonna work fine you don't have to use the exact colors I've used um, you just want a very bluish green that's dark um, when painting this, keep it away, probably about four, three or four millimeters away from the edge, the shoreline. The reason for that is this is not the color that's going to be on the shoreline when we finish. And it's just going to take you a lot longer now to try to match that shoreline painting each tile. So just stay away from it. You're going to take a different color up to it. Also, if you take a lot of time to mat bring this right up to the shoreline now and match that shoreline, you're going to have to double that effort when you paint the next color and try to match your first demarcation edge exactly. So don't do it. Keep it away. A few millimeters is fine. Just don't go right up to the shoreline. Very important. When you're painting this, paint it over onto the sides a few millimeters away from the top edge. That way you don't see any of your primer where these two tiles are going to meet up for your... Um, for your water area so carry the green over now set this aside to dry if it's not a totally even coat like mine wasn't I went back and put a subsequent coat on and you might even need depending how thick you put them on you might even need to do a third coat and again this is why it's a really good idea to keep it away from the shore edge it's gonna make putting those additional coats on go very very fast because you're not having to be carefully you know matching any edges Okay, now we're going to paint the shallow areas. To do this, we're going to mix the green for the, that we mixed up for the water and use the butter pecan that I covered, uh, which is the kind of the wet dry brush technique from the cavern painting tutorial that was used on the rocky areas. Now, there's no specific ratio of mixing these. Basically, you're going to mix them together. You're going to have a heavier concentration of the butter pecan uh, the closer you get to shore. You want it much lighter. You're going to have a heavier concentration of the water dark green the further away you get from shore. And you want to stop painting about halfway between the shore and the outer edge. That's a one inch demarcation there um, at the edges where the shore ends and the water begins. So you're going to want to keep this varying watercolor about, you're going to start about halfway there, halfway along the water. So you're only going to paint about a half inch stripe of this and I'm just going to mark out my half inch mark right here just keep it maybe a little less but uh, this is my darker green just a tiny tiny bit of butter pecan mixed in and then I'm going to start mixing more and more butter pecan in as I get closer to the shore and you're just painting streaks. Don't think you have to blend this all in and make it look like an airbrush effect. You don't. That's going to actually work against you. You want some brush strokes in this. That's going to make it look like water ripples. So the closer you get to shore, and here I'm actually going in and very carefully matching the shore edge, which is why we didn't paint the dark green up to it. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered. Now you're using the light green to go up to that point. Um, just keep your brush flowing in the direction the water would, which would be parallel to the shore edge. Don't paint in a 90 degree angle to it. It's not going to look natural. By doing it like this, you can leave all your brush strokes in and it's going to look fine. And it, it may not look great right now, but once you get the clear coat on, it's going to look phenomenal. So again, I'm just going in. If, if I think I got an area too light, I add the dark green. If I think I got an area too dark, I add a little more butter pecan to it. Uh, there's no right or wrong to this. You can't screw it up. I'm even going in using my finger just to blend it out. It doesn't matter. 
uh, just keep it going parallel to the shoreline. That's the key thing here. So I think that one's going to be done. I'll do one more here real fast. Just do a speed painting on it. Uh, again, lightest color at the shore. Work out darker until you get out to the about the halfway point. And just blend that in. And as long as you keep painting parallel to the shore, it doesn't matter what your brush strokes look like. They're going to end up looking like water ripples. So I think this is going to be about done here. Just a little bit more. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, that one is done. There, maybe not. Yeah, a little more on the edge. There, perfect. Tighten up the uh, edge around the rocks at the shore. And done. All right, now, final stage, clear coating. I am going to use clear nail polish because of all the things I've tried, I like this the best. It's very durable. When you apply this, make sure you get it over the edge, onto the sides a little bit too. That'll keep it from chipping uh, when you have it scraping against adjacent tiles. So just brush this on. Uh, don't worry, it's not going to go on ease evenly. It's going to have a lot of brush strokes in it. It will flatten out and even out as it dries. But the key thing here is get it over the edges, onto the sides, so that it makes a good seal over those edges where it would be prone to chipping. Now, if one coat isn't enough, you can always go back after a few hours and put a second coat on. I've never done more than two coats with this. Um, other options you can use for this are Liquitex Gel Medium, the gloss. Uh, it's just a clear acrylic gel. I use this for river tiles because it goes on very thick and you're going to get a lot of heavy wave uh, looking ripples. It really isn't suitable, or at least in my opinion, I don't like it for still water and caverns, which is why I use the nail polish. I've even tried uh, Pledge Floor Acrylic. Uh, it looks nice. You need about eight coats of it, and you got to let each one dry a day in between. The only thing I don't like is it tends to be prone to chipping off with use of the tiles. Um, if you're using it for a well or something all contained, it works great. In a case like this where it's got to run up to an edge that's going to be kind of rubbing against another tile, it can flake off. So again, I would just stick with clear nail polish, buy whatever's cheapest. I just got that on Amazon. That's going to do it. Um, thanks for checking out the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and please click that subscribe button.